I think we need to revise our relationship with doubt and keep an eye on this whole thing because certainly coming up in the church world as a member of the church and a leader in the church, I think we had a dysfunctional relationship with doubt. I think we were threatened by it and people with it. If someone asked us a um, complicated question uh, and we saw doubt in it, it's something we felt we had to rush to fix, to fix the person, to fix the doubt. And when we preached on doubt, it was always to do with Thomas, doubting Thomas. The Bible never called him that, by the way. We labeled him as that, which our ego loves to do. And so we framed doubt as something you shouldn't have, that that's not what you have when you are a follower of Jesus or you um, are, have conviction about what you are believing in. And millions of young people in America are leaving the church, late teens, early 20s. This is well documented. One of the reasons they say why they're leaving the church is because they say the church is threatened by our doubt. When we have questions, when we're questioning things in the church, questioning the teaching or the values or the beliefs, the first sense we get is that, that there's something wrong with us, that we are broken, we need fixing. I want to encourage you in this little piece to camera to keep an eye on your relationship with doubt, yours and your attitude towards other people, especially as parents with your kids, leaders in the church, especially to the people in the church. Doubt, doubts are the foothills of Mount Wisdom. You have to go through them, clamber up through those foothills to get to higher levels of consciousness and awareness and clarity. But if we demonize the foothills, people will stay there, quit there and leave the mountain and never discover the wisdom that can only be accessed by journeying through the foothills of doubt. I think we need to revise our relationship with doubt. All right, hope that helps.